Good morning. It's a Sunday morning and I decided to spend some time working on the new QGIS website. Um, so here we are. This, I thought, well, let's see how much I managed to do, but I thought I would try to maintain a bit of a journal of the process of building the website um, because not often you get to start something from, from scratch and kind of keep a work log as you're building it. So I'm going to just um, show a little bit about um, the process I'm following and some of the thinking behind um, what you're doing and so on. And this is going to be a ramble, <laughs> so just bear with me. I'm going to, I have got a, the first chicken scratches of the beginnings of the, how we're going to put the site together. Maybe that will change completely, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to ramble a bit and show you what we are scheming and how things would work. So um, let's have a look. Um, first of all, I'm gonna, oopsie, I'm gonna pull up a screen share um, over here. All right, and I'm, I'm on the QGIS website, GitHub repository, and um, um, we we had a whole bunch of sessions at FOS for at uh, the QGIS Hackfest in Firenze, which was just before FOS4G 2022, and um, we did some brainstorming about thinking what we want to show on the website, why we want to overhaul the website, if we want to overhaul the website, and um, the we was mainly Anita Graza, myself, Amy Burness and uh, Silbiwe Tilod and um, and then later we were added by Anine uh, Anine, sorry I forget your surname but she's been amazing as well adding lots of design ideas and so on so we um, we, we started off with just some sketches and I think there's more uh, some more detailed sketches in here I can try to open it quickly and see um, Um, let me just extract some way. And let me just open it quickly. What was it called again? Obviously, QGIS website overall dot draw dot I, I, uh. Okay, so this was just just to show you the the kind of initial formative thinking. So we were thinking about like why and how and what technologies to use and so on, and what we want to get out of the website. We made a kind of a ugly but <laughs> functional looking diagram, just showing the different things we wanted to present, like the community chats and the blogs and all the re access to all the resources and create kind of like a hub feeling. And so I'm not going to go through this in detail, but um, this is actually all on the GitHub issue that's um, on the QGIS website repository. So we did all this thinking and then we went and started um, mocking up um, kind of some design ideas in Figma. Um, <coughs> Let's see if this will actually open for me because half the time it doesn't because it wants me to log in. But, um, it should, it's open, uh, it's, it's uh, globally viewable, so you should be able to look at it if you go and click on the issue as well. Come on, Figma. Okay, and uh, we went through like a process of kind of like wireframing out the um, different screens. So I think the start screen would be here, the home page, and uh, we just copy and pasted a bunch of imagery and things at the beginning, but then. Um, you can see we've been starting to get some new interesting graphics and things in there. And we kind of, come, kind of came up with the concept of the navigation and the, uh, 
how the site should be organized. And then when Anine came and joined us, she also started adding her ideas and she brought a lot of great design uh, thought to the process. So this is kind of like the next iteration of how how it looks with this idea of having these little blobs <laughs> around and, and trimming the amount of content down and, and um, sort of spacing things out a bit more and having these expandable block blocks and things like this. So, um, and then we've also been discussing about what uh, platform to use for um, hosting, the options being uh, to maybe copy what we've done on blog.qgis.org and use wordpress.org for hosting and that's quite appealing for uh, for some reasons one is a lot of people and especially designers know what um, how wordpress works and so on and um, there is so they've already got an existing skills base um, and second they you know wordpress would take care of all the hosting for us we don't have to worry about hosting our own site which is interesting um, but the sort of downside to it is it's probably uh, a bit cumbersome and it's um, you know we would we would quite like to have a static website and just generate it and put it on a on a uh, you know uh, directory with no moving parts and no databases and nothing to get hacked and all that kind of stuff so um, so the other option is to use something called Hugo Hugo uh, website. Uh, Hugo is basically um, a framework for creating static websites and it gives you like a whole templating system and <coughs> probably nice to look at the showcase to see some kind of things that people have done and you can you can basically design the whole layout of the site however you want to and a different uh, like um, uh, reusable content blocks and um, these ones all pretty look like this, uh, the same, but let's try to find some more interesting ones. Um, and there's a whole theme gallery where you can get s started with, and you can use GitHub Actions and other kind of automation workflows to actually manage the whole building process. And it's in Markdown, so we can version control the, the site in, Mark, uh, in Git and so on. So, uh, so those are the choices. We're sort of mainly leaning towards uh, using Hugo. Uh, also, just because from my personal side, I've got experience with using Hugo, and I don't, I mean, I have experience with WordPress as well, but I, you know, if, I, if it was down to me, I prefer to work with Hugo than WordPress. Um, so, from there, I've been uh, working on the first chicken scratches, like I said, of making a Hugo based site. So, I'm really at the very beginning, and um, uh, I'm going to work based on some existing work that I did before, this open source project I made called Hugo Watcher. And what, what that does is it basically watches a folder of files and automatically builds the, the Hugo site, um, but all in the Docker container. So you can already do that kind of with Hugo, but mine, mine is basically just a Python script which um, does some extra fancy stuff like copies templates in and um, um, builds the site. and um, the goal was to integrate it with another project uh, called filebrowser.org. It's a really, really nice project for um, uh, giving you like a web file browser um, experience where you can go like um, onto the website and then edit and change and manage files on your um, uh, on your lo on your own web server. And um, so you get an experience like this where you can log in and you can see all your files and you can upload and download files of whole folders at a time. So we put the website content in here and I've still got to figure out all the little links between things like, for example, we're going to have this on the site where you can go basically just um, what you see is what you get, almost edit files and then, then my Hugo Watcher will automatically build the site whenever you change something. Um, and we're going to have Git, so I've got to figure out how all the, the parts will fit together still. That's still on my um, to-do list. So, um, yeah, so what I want to show today is really just, the, like I said, the very first um, first um, attempts at... Um, basically, I took a really simple website. I looked for a really simple CSS framework. Um, I'm, I've sort of, for now, settled on one called Pure CSS. 
I wanted something really small and to start with philosophy of like start with nothing and build it up um, bit by bit rather than start with everything and then have a lot of crap on the on the project which is actually not needed. So this um, this framework is really simple, but it gives you some like uh, layout um, things with grids, and it gives you you know the normal stuff for doing forms and um, buttons, and it doesn't have heaps and heaps of um, different things. The main thing is that it's responsive. So if I um, if I go in here and I switch to like a mobile view, everything collapses nicely and uh, you know automatically aligns itself and just does everything like that you want a responsive website to do. Because obviously most of our users are going to come in on, on uh, mobile, so, or a lot of them will. So, okay, so that, oh, no, I left it there, so we can close that, I think, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you then, so this is um, going to be like a fresh start. So um, I basically checked out Hugo Watcher. Uh, if you're working locally and actually changing um, the templates and things, you probably want to run this build script regularly, which just builds the Docker container. Otherwise, it will pull. Uh, I, I will push it occasionally to the to the um, Docker Hub. Um, so the build script builds this Docker container, which is the Hugo Watcher container. And then I've got a um, example Docker Compose here, which runs basically three services. Runs a simple HTTP web server. It runs um, this Hugo Watcher container, which I've just been explaining, which will automatically build the site whenever something changes. And it runs this file browser um, container. So this is not like how we would run production site, probably, because we probably wouldn't use this um, Python HTTP um, one, which is just really more for testing. We'd probably put Nginx over there instead. So if I run this, um, I'm just going to run it in the foreground. Um, uh, and I've removed any state, so it's running as if it was brand new. And you'll see what happened on the logs here is that Hugo Watcher uh, went and built the site. And um, uh, there's some themes that get bundled in. And what I'm starting is, the, like again, the very beginnings of this theme called QGIS theme, which is based on this uh, Hugo pure Hugo um, theme that I uh, copied. And um, so if I run that, I will have now... Um, my website using that pure CSS um, uh, CSS framework and using the pure Hugo uh, template, which is the w most or one of the most simple <laughs> templates you can have for Hugo. But then I also have the file watcher here. And you can log in with some default credentials of admin and admin, uh, which you should change when you go into production straight away. Um, and so inside of here, I can see what's basically inside of my docker volume for the website contents and um, it's a very file browser is a super nice project for just basically letting you go um, browse around in your uh, web server and edit stuff so i'm going to just show you like uh, here's uh, one of the blog posts and the experience we're looking for is that i can just come in here um, and say um, something like that. If I make an edit like that and I press Control S or I press the Save button, then if you look on the logs here, you'll see that immediately a new build of the site happened. And um, if you look on the page, you'll see that um, if you refresh it, you see the new text. So <laughs> this is very humble beginnings and everything may change. We may decide to use WordPress later, but I'm just showing you this as a starting point and um, I'll try and check in again um, as we go along with the site, and uh, you can see how how things grow from this very basic start to eventually, hopefully, having a website that looked like some of those screen mockups that I showed you. So thanks for watching, and uh, catch you on the next one.